the theme is to uh, build a coalition. Uh, so basically what I'm thinking is uh, right now there's a lot of uh, anti-Asian racism and there's a lot of anger and frustration and fear. Um, and especially after Andrew Yang's op-ed on Washington Post, when that came out, that really kind of split Asian Americans into two camps, you know, a lot of people are, feel insulted by his, by his op-ed. He's basically asking Asian Americans to be more, to show more Americanness to the rest of the country. And uh, a lot of people feel oh, this is not fair, you know, we're getting victimized. And his call for action is instead of uh, condemning racism and uh, maybe find a way to, to uh, address it, you know, his call to action is, hey, we need to be more red, white, and blue, you know, uh, less yellow, I guess that's, the, that's his message. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but on the other hand, there are other people who are saying, yeah, that there's nothing wrong with that. And that's, uh, what I like the most is what uh, Judy Chu, Congresswoman Judy Chu did. She actually joined hands with uh, African-American and Hispanic groups to have a, a joint uh, press conference to denounce racism and build a coalition. Um, I think that's definitely the way to go because uh, I still believe that, you know, even, even though I'm Asian American, I want to speak out against racism. Uh, we can't do this on our own. Uh, racism will only disappear in America if other races are offended by racism against Asian Americans. So that's the ultimate goal. And uh, because, uh, <clears throat> Taya, you have worked in uh, like diversity training for like 20, 30 years, right? And, what? Yeah, yeah, no, no. and also, <laughs> yeah, I just want to uh, introduce Taya to, to uh, people who are, who are new to our show. You know, Taya also is a producer, started from PBS, did a lot of documentaries there, and also then he formed a company with Mike Toe uh, to produce a, a lot of really uh, great videos to address a lot of social issues. Uh, I was really impressed by two videos you guys put out. Well, one was when uh, Daniel Day Kim quit his job from Hawaii Five O after he found out that Asian actors were paid less than white actors, and he had the guts to actually quit. You know, that's really impressive. And you guys did a wonderful video on the subject. And the second one I'm very impressed about is uh, this video called "Coffee While Asian." Uh, it already got like four million views on the internet, you know, and really raised a lot of awareness on this issue. So from your own experience, uh, what would be the best way to build a coalition with the rest of the country uh, to kind of combat this uh, anti-Asian racism? Yeah, I think that often what we do is we start on the back end. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we think that it's up to adults to make these changes. But for example, your son was in the Hawaii uh, Five Below video that we did. <laughs> yes. um, and uh, I remember having a little bit of a conversation with him about what we were doing. Uh, oh. I think while you were sleeping on one of the couches. The... I, I, I think that when we start on the, on the opposite end of it, that whole pipeline, we're, we're, we're missing a critical point that, that children are very capable of understanding not only very critical issues in, in their own way, but also they often have solutions that we haven't thought about. So well, I think that when we think about, the, yeah, I think building a coalition I think we should think much more broadly, like not just intelligent P, uh, adults, you know, with PhDs, uh, but also um, everybody. Let, let's all put our minds to this and figure out how to address these issues for all ages and all people. Mm -hmm. So like uh, from your experience, what would be the, the quickest way to let people know that there is racism against Asians and uh, we should uh, speak up and uh, let people know. Because I know yeah. you did a lot of training all over the country, right? 
Yeah. So, so for about 30 years, to, be, to be able to ask you. Yeah. Um, for about 30 years, I've been uh, traveling around the country as a speaker and as a trainer, uh, as a diversity trainer, uh, through different forms of entertainment, stage and television as well. Um, I'm also a producer and uh, director at IBIS Consulting Group. So we do B2B uh, uh, corporate uh, events and, and trainings mm -hmm. um, on these particular issues. Uh, racial equity we're focusing on now with some pretty large uh, corporations uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, and also the work that I do with Mike Toe. So we, we're reaching sort of this large amount of populations of people around the world addressing these issues, particularly now uh, Asian American issues, because, especially because of COVID-19, have very quickly become uh, the point that we're trying to address. And for example, I had a conversation with my daughter, um, who is Chinese American, and her two friends, um, who are also the same. And they were both telling about their, their own experiences uh, in the world. My daughter used to work at a, uh, worked at a Starbucks. Um, and she, she had some comments made to her that were very concerning. And so I talked to uh, them about you know, how to address this, how, how to address it in real time, mm -hmm. but also um, being very realistic about what the consequences are. We're, we're under attack. Yeah. We're under attack mm -hmm. every day. Many of my friends, many of my uh, family and in different parts of the world are under attack because of the same reason. So racism isn't just an American thing. This is everywhere and uh, Chinese and Chinese Americans and Chinese around the world and Asians, East Asians, are being attacked for this particular virus. And I think we need to address it head on. Uh, were you asked any questions by members of other communities like Hispanics and uh, Blacks saying, hey, you know, what did you go through? You know, because when I, uh, USA Today actually used a clip from the video you guys made. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading the comments. It was pretty disturbing, you know? Yeah. One of them said, okay, I'm glad uh, someone punched their superiority complex. You know, the, as if we've been enjoying white privilege all the time. You know, this, mm -hmm. it's a very, very strange. And uh, other comments are, hey, welcome to the club. We've been experiencing this all the time. It just made me feel that people have no idea that uh, anti-Asian racism existed before COVID-19, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, a, a, yes, certainly. Um, and I think also uh, racism in general uh, has been very much part of American history, uh, mm -hmm. particularly <laughs> for Asian Americans, East Asians, Japanese, of course, World War II, uh, Chinese Exclusionary Act and all that. The, the, those are very prominent times in our history that is not taught in schools. This goes back to the, the other side of the pipeline. Yeah. So we're, not, we're not teaching children real history. Oh, yeah. But that's, that reminds me, you know, my son's going to a really good school here in California. So they taught uh, the Holocaust and uh, the emancipation. But then for diversity's sake, his school is one of the few schools in the country actually talked about Asian Americans. But what they, they were taught is, is a cartoon book. Right. And it didn't mention the, the Exclusion Act or the Japanese internment camps, none of those. So I just feel that we probably need to have a like, petition you know, just to tell schools, hey, you know, this is part of the American fabric. Uh, we really need to let kids know about it's not it's it, it's the schools but actually it goes deeper than that it's the districts it's the school systems it's mm -hmm. the department of education united mm -hmm. states it comes down from federal level and it's the state level and the local level so oh. it's not even the teachers and the schools that yeah. we have a fundamental problem in this country and that is owning up our own particular issues and our racism in whatever form it is and saying yes this is this was a bad thing let's talk about it and let's teach children what really happened. Because by the time they become adults, they, they're already clueless about what really happened. So when it comes to the point where we blame someone else, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. That's easy to do. Yeah, yeah. Racism is child abuse. That's how, what I always say. If you teach a child 
to treat other people because they're, they look different, that is child abuse. It's mental child abuse. And if children are learning today that COVID-19 is an Asian or a Chinese virus, that is racism and it is child abuse, period. Uh, hearing you say that phrase made my day. <laughs>